You're so close to getting your pulp and fiber products perfect, but something you could easily overlook is mess specification. We'll tell you everything you need to know, so stick around. Hi there, I'm Andrew Kotlar, and as companies all over the globe turn to more eco-friendly solutions, odds are you've come across molded pulp and fiber. And for those who are interested in using woven wire mesh screens for pulp and fiber, the mesh count used is one of the more notable factors. So, what role does mesh count play in the overall quality of molded pulp and fiber products? Well, WS Tyler has helped customers weave woven wire mesh into their process for over 150 years. And in this particular case, are here to help you understand the impact mesh specifications can have on the quality of pulp and fiber goods. So in this video, we'll go over the role woven wire mesh has in the pulp and fiber industry, the mesh counts typically used in the pulp and fiber industry, the mesh count you should be using, and the effects of mesh count for overall cost. To form molded pulp and fiber products, a slurry of paper, various fiber, and warm water are used as the foundation. The fibers are typically small fragments of sugarcane, straw, bamboo, or other resources. Once the slurry is formed, it's transferred to the production line, where metallic dyes lined with woven wire and mesh are dipped into the slurry. A combination of vacuum pressure and heat is then introduced to force the water through the pore opening of the mesh leaving only the form pulp and fiber. By using mesh, manufacturers can guarantee a certain quality in their products as it helps evenly distribute heat and pressure to increase consistency. 50 mesh and 24 mesh are the two prominent mesh counts used by molded pulp and fiber manufacturers. Most industry standards use these mesh counts in multi-layer pieces for added durability and quality control. Mesh count is the amount of pore openings in a linear inch. By knowing how many openings are in the wire mesh, you give yourself more control over what passes through the mesh. So when it comes to molded pulp and fiber, this means you can accurately extrude all the water from the slurry, retain the cake of fibers, and create a perfectly molded product. But I should say, by using a mesh count that is too small, there's a risk of hindering the efficiency of your machinery and operation. Using a mesh count that is too large and you, you won't be able to retain an adequate amount of fibers, which causes lower quality or even faulty molds. It's based on two factors, the fibers in your slurry and the quality you're trying to achieve. A good rule of thumb to follow is the smaller the mesh count, the smoother and higher quality of the final mold. This means if you're forming a product where quality and aesthetics matter, you should experiment with higher mesh counts. On the other hand, if you're forming products such as packaging that are meant for function, not form, lower mesh counts should be used. Mesh count is really important to pulp and fiber production, but it's important to understand that the mesh count you choose affects the cost of the mesh quite a bit. So for the mesh count's effect on cost, the higher the mesh count, the more expensive it will be. It's because the finer mesh specifications require a lot more labor because it takes more time to set up on the looms. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn even more about woven wire mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kotler, and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.